your stance on the canal district as it's proposed in terms of compliance with the EPA agreement, flooding mitigation, and economic development? Well, first off, I'm going to go back to the last answer because that's the biggest bunch of hogwash I've ever heard. Tom Gallagher ran the sewer lines out to Salem Noble Road. The annexation was Tom's baby. He was fortunate enough not to be in office when the official vote got taken place, but all of the work that went out there was because of Tom. And Tom was quoted in the newspaper as saying, I would have voted for it. So I think the people of Oak Park and Salem Noble Road know darn good and well who's responsible for the annexation. As far as the canal district is concerned, I really don't want to call it the canal district because it's not going to be there. We've got an EPA mandate we've got to meet, and we will do it, but we're not going to do it with the canal. Uh, Tom's own numbers, when he's created whatever answer he's come up with for the month, it started out in 2010 at a $29 million cost, then it jumped to $55 million, then it jumped to $144 million. Never once has Tom said how we, we, we will pay for that canal. Your sewer rates will be tripled, but that is not going to pay for the canal. We need to be asking our city leaders, okay, the idea of a canal sounds neat. How are we going to pay for it? I'm telling you folks, you, you put too big of a burden on people. You've raised their property taxes 30% in the last four years. You're going to triple their sewer rates. How are you going to pay for a $144 million canal? You have not even addressed it. How you have the cost of the bridges to cross the river or to cross the ditch? You've not addressed the, the annual maintenance. We will meet the EPA demands, but we will do it with a buried pipe, which the city itself has submitted a plan that says it can be done for half the cost. We've got other drainage problems throughout the city of Jeff Oak Park, Waverly Road, just to name a few. Golf View. Let's fix all the problems in Jeffersonville, not just a six-block area of downtown. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Gallagher. Well, it's interesting. The man who overs is overseeing a bankrupt county now is blowing the numbers way out of proportion. The total long-term control plan is $143 million. The canal is not. The reason we are putting in a canal is because it is the cheapest alternative, and we get economic development, which will pay us back. If you want to pay for a pipe and your sewer rates, go right ahead. I don't think that's a smart thing to do. To hold your rates down, we need to be efficient in how we do things and make sure we do it at the lowest cost. I know how to do that, and I'm trying to do that. The numbers we give you are good numbers. The last time it rained, when the river was up, the Holiday Inn flooded. We've got more water trying to get through Clarksville to a pump station that can't handle it. And it stays in Jeffersonville and it floods out buildings and it floods out a building at the tune of about $150,000 to $200,000 when it does that. I'm a responsible mayor and I'm going to solve the problems. And I'm going to solve the problems in Oak Park. Under my esteemed colleague's tutelage, the county hasn't done a thing in Oak Park, but now he's going to do something. The fact of the matter is, we do a lot of things and we solve a lot of problems. The problem is, there's a lot of them, and we're doing them one at a time, and we're paying for it. We're fiscally responsible. We're not bankrupt. And if you want economic development, get the county back where it belongs because they're killing us with people who are saying, why would I come to a county that's bankrupt? There's the problem. Leadership and the lack of. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher and Mr. Hester. Well, audience, thank you. We can start with that. We could spend a lot of time. This is a very complicated subject. This is not something it's easy, easy to take sides and casually talk about it. But I've handled projects like this myself that has to do with exactly these, these same issues. Not quite as large, but but the canal, in my opinion, and I've said, stated earlier, I don't think it's practical. It's not the most efficient way or the, or the cheapest way of getting rid of the overflow, the stormwater overflows. 
That can be done with a five foot diameter pipe from the plant down the old railroad right away in, into the creek. There are some other problems associated with it, but another way it's very economical to do that. Matter of fact, I understand it's already been planned. I think the canal was a nice distraction from the fact that our sewer rates doubled last year. And it's, it's really a, it's quite a wonderful idea. But nonetheless, in the long run, I don't believe it will work. I have some problems with the initial decisions made up front on the sewer repair work, EPA mandate. And a decision was made to keep the sanitary sewage combined with the storm. This immediately created a situation where the city now has to pump 50 million gallons a day, is what I've heard enough to be, having confirmed that myself, pump this out of the city up to the sewage treatment plant where they provide a portion of treatment. And they're looking away then to get rid of that 50 million gallons a day, considering it in the canal, which I think is too expensive, whereas you can pump it to the creek. The, the bottom line is there, I, my opinion, being an engineer dealing with this thing, there's easier ways to deal with this, more efficient ways to deal with this long term, because combined sewer, sanitary sewage, in your stormwater, the treatment requirements are going to go up and up and up, and the costs are going to go up and up and up as we proceed on.